Hey, this is Cameron, and welcome to the practice log. All right, well, there's a lot on the docket today, so let's go ahead and jump into it, shall we? Well, you know, I'm gonna keep things pretty brief because we're gonna go into a Manuel Barwaco documentary today. It's been a little while since we watched him. I did two Johnny W's in a row by accident, and that was an accident. I'm not obsessed with John Williams or anything, though he is a cool guy. Yeah, what'd you guys think of that, uh, that box series that I'm starting? Oh, so far one episode's out. That's pretty, uh, new, right? Pretty interesting. Well, on the docket today, I mean, same as usual, I'm just gonna be working on that second movement of the Morel Sonatina, and of course, working on the first and third movements, those are already mostly memorized. The third movement's coming along pretty well, actually. All the parts that are slow are starting to get a bit faster now, so that's feeling good. Alright, well, I won't go on for too long. Let's go ahead and jump into that documentary, shall we? Alright, well, this is around where we left off. What are these emojis doing here? I think the last thing we saw was just this horrifying scene of five guys and one guitar. Let's just keep it going. We're still at the dinner party and they're drinking wine and playing guitar i don't have any alcohol today i don't know what to tell you guys i remember seeing a place that i call the raft museum in key west and you see these things in Woo, key west you know cubans try to, to leave the island you don't throw yourself in you know in shark infested waters and one of those things unless you're desperate it's, it's really as a cuban as a human being it's just hard to see that you know it's hard to see that it's hard to see why it's, that's not necessary people don't need to die that way yeah I agree. Uh, and man, let me tell you, I was kind of hesitant to even like watch something because I'm kind of in like a more serious mood. Like I've done a lot of work today. So I kind of just wanted to practice and like not get silly, but I, I think I won't even have to get silly because I'm not going to get silly from that. So I won't go back. I, I, cannot, I, can, I cannot go there and, and be seen in any way, shape or form that I'm in any way support that. When he did his Cuba recording, he decided that he wanted to dedicate the recording to those who tried to cross the strait to come to the U.S. and have died in the process. It's as much of a closure as he can get without actually going to Cuba than his relationship with Leo Robert. It keeps getting more and more complicated, I think. Um, he grew up in Cuba adoring Leo Brower, adoring him. I've never played Leo Brower before. I feel like everybody else has. I don't know, I just skipped him. I'm sorry. And I remember being very impressed with this guy playing the guitar on, te on television, classical guitar. When I was nine, he was in my hometown, and there was meeting him. And I'm playing for him. Apparently, he, he thought I was talented, and, and uh, this guy goes on to, to become my, my, my idol. You know, he just... I mean, I mean, I was sure that there, if there was a guy, it would be second to him. Hmm. Wow. What do you think happened? This is getting weird. This is a weird episode of Sore Hands so far. One of the, the more painful experiences, I think, for Manuel has been lately when, when he read that Leo Brower had signed the letter in support of the Cuban government executing those, uh, those hijackers that tried to hijack this boat to come over to the U.S. Dude, that's rough. Oh my god. What letter did Leo Brower sign, though? I mean, he's not, like, a government official. It must have been some, like, petition type thing. Yeah, dang, dude. That sucks. Brower is widely regarded as the greatest guitarist. I guess I won't play any Leo Brower. But Well has talked to me quite a bit about the, uh, the situation there. He said, you know, you don't know what it's like to not be able to leave. You don't know what the oppression is like. You don't know what it's like to not have freedom unless you've experienced it. That's a divide that will probably never be crossed, at least while the system remains in place and while Castro is still there. There's something happened one time that was very powerful for me. And that is I was walking on the beach and there were some kids playing and there was a bone. One of the kids made a comment about the bone maybe being a Cuban pointed out very dramatically the, the drama of the Cuban situation, you know. His friend did a video tape of the walk that Manuel used to do from the conservatory in Santiago de Cuba to his home. He just took a video camera and he filmed a little bit in the conservatory. Then he walked to Manuel's house. Vivía Manuel Barruego. Unknowingly, he actually went to Manuel's bedroom and everything looked in ruins. Uh, the paint was peeling off the walls, there were holes mm. in the ceiling, and it didn't look at all like, like the way it looked when he was living there. Manuel's friend went back to the house uh, later. He was shocked to see that they had renovated the house. They had 
painted the walls, they had fixed the holes, and it was the only house in that area that actually had been had been renovated and had been fixed. And it seems to be that the, the only reason that they did that is because he had been there before to film, and he had told them that he was filming for Manuel Barrueco, who was a world-famous guitarist. And the government got wind of this, and they came in and they, they fixed it up. Wow, that's really weird. <laughs> I'm a lot quieter today, huh? You guys noticed that? All right, I think it's over. I think that part is done, though. Yeah, it is. All right, so this is the one serious uh, Bar Waco episode, so that's just how it is, which is actually perfect because I don't really feel like making jokes right now anyways. I do feel like getting to the practice bench, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, back to this part, which is really what I wanted to do tonight anyways. Yeah, I just kind of feel like practicing, you know? I just really want to practice right now. I'm just going to go ahead and jump into the morel song, Tina. Uh, actually, first I'm going to warm up with scales and stuff. That's what I've been doing. Uh, and I think it's been helping a lot, actually. So, guys, practice your scales. It helps. I know it seems stupid, but it's not, I promise. Well, I'll see you on the other side. I've been working a lot on the Morel Sonatina. I did play through my Samba once. That's more just to maintain it though. Main focus has been the Morel. I worked a lot on movement too, which is good. And I think that's what I'm gonna play for you today. So, come on over. You know, it's been kind of a somber episode. So why not play a somber movement? Check this out.
I was so close. <laughs> I mean, not close to anything. I made it further in my studies in that one, so it's not too bad. But yeah, I feel like that's coming along. I kind of flubbed some of the beginning, but that's okay. It's all coming along. I would give that one another, if I practice log, like 150. I think I'll have that. Maybe not memorized, but like playable. Maybe we'll have a Morel extravaganza. That'd be pretty cool. All right, well, I think we can pretty much call this one here. Ah, man, I'm getting sleepy too. My eyes are getting a little blurry while I was reading that. So... Let's wrap it up. All right, well, you know, if you made it this far, be sure to subscribe, all that stuff, leave a like. Hey, you want some guitar lessons? I got some guitar lessons for you. Just check the description and we can set that up. I'm accepting new students right now through YouTube. So if you're interested in that, you know what to do. And you know, if you have any questions about anything, feel free to leave a comment and I will address them in the chair at some point. All right, well, I'm gonna go to bed. So I'll see you tomorrow.